Now I'm going to introduce somebody. Um, I met it. I think it was at the Kentucky. It was the Youth Advocate Rally in Frankfurt, and um, I told her I did uh, youth violence prevention. She goes, "So do I." I said, "Really? What?" She goes, six years and under." I said, "You're kidding." I, we had to have her after that. <laughs> So it's, we want to cover every aspect of it. So this is Susan Vessels from uh, 4C, and you can, we're gonna hook up your wireless mic. Oops. There we go. Thank you for coming in the snow. Certainly, certainly. Um, thank all of you all for coming. You know, when I met Doug, I thought, well, that's very cool, of course I'll do that. And then about three weeks later, I thought, wait a minute, that's the day after Valentine's Day, and I was planning something big with my, my new sweetheart, but I, I'm, I'm a newlywed. Um, <laughs> and so I really had some second thoughts about it, and then it started snowing, and I'm like, Doug, are you sure you want to continue with this on the day after Valentine's Day? And he immediately comes back with what I am learning is his trademark incredible enthusiasm with, hell yes, we're going to go forward with this. <laughs> and we're really looking forward to it. So it, it, it helped me do that, too. Um, Community Coordinated Child Care is a private, nonprofit um, organization. And our job is kind of fluid. Um, we help parents find child care, daycare. We help. Um, child care providers increase the quality of it by training about 90% of the child care staff locally. And overall, it really is about being the, the um, child care go-to guys. We can tell you uh, where it is, how much it costs, what their, um, their focus is in that child care program. Um, and essentially, it's our job is to make child care better, whatever that means. Um, I, I came to child care kind of a, uh, a different route. I actually started off working in kid prisons. Um, I was in maximum security adolescent facilities here and worked my way from maximum security to minimum security to shelter house to thinking, man, this is hard. It is hard dealing with parents of 16-year-olds. Maybe if I could deal with parents of 16-month-olds, that might um, make my life a little bit uh, better. And it, we really might be able to make more of an effect here. So um, that's what I did. I opened a child care program, and I did that for 12 years. And um, I don't know if any of you all have ever had the opportunity to spend days or weeks in child care program. But it's a lot like going to the circus every day. Um, that, you know, people are at a circus with lots of puppies because they, they are so much like puppies. They, they roll on the floor <laughs> over each other. They bite each other occasionally. Um, there's a whole lot of snot involved with it. Um, and it's a really good method of birth control. So <laughs> any of uh, you parents who are thinking that that might be something that you want to um, suggest to your children is to get a job <laughs> in child care. Um, so I did that for 12 years. And then I went to um, 4C and because they were my lifeline when I was a director of a program. It gets a little bit lonely sometimes in the circus. And um, I've been there now for about 23 years. And about, I'd say, two years ago, we started getting these calls from child care providers, from the directors of programs, saying, and these were people that had been in the, the field for 25 years, maybe. And um, they were saying, you know, you all have to help us. We have got some kids that we've never seen behavior like this before which really got my attention because I know some of these people and I know that they've seen pretty much everything. One of them really got my attention when she said, school readiness, school readiness, school readiness. Okay, so we're supposed to get these kids ready for school. We can't even get them through lunch without them 
throwing things, kicking people, cussing out the teachers. And I kept getting more and more of these, thinking, what the heck? What is going on here? And, and it was the same thing over and over and over again. So I started doing some research about, OK, and, and my background is in counseling psychology. So this is something that, that is really um, very fascinating for me. Um, and found out that there is actually, there was this wonderful curriculum that was developed through the Administration for Children and Families in Vanderbilt. And uh, it's got a horrible, horrible name. It sounds like a venereal disease. It's um, C. Syphil is the <laughs> name of it. Um, so the first thing I thought was, we will change the name, um, <laughs> which we did. And the, the goal of this program is to work with child care center staff and parents to help them help children develop social emotional strengths. Because, you know, kids don't get thrown out of kindergarten because they don't know their numbers. And they don't get thrown out of kindergarten because they don't know their ABCs. They get thrown out of kindergarten because they can't uh, keep their hands to themselves. They think the way to get uh, to lunch first is to punch the kid in front of them. Um, and they, they don't have the, what is now being called executive skills. And those are things like uh, persistence and patience and um, empathy. And so we decided that we would start this program. And we have just started it. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Um, and what this does, the point of this whole program, we, we now call this program not C. Syphil. Um, it is called the GREAT program, which stands for grit, resilience, empathy, and teamwork. And the point of this program is really not to make kids' lives perfect. You know, we know that we can't um, take every kid out of a poverty situation. And we know we can't take them out of families that have violence, um, unfortunately, involved on a daily basis. But what we can do is we can teach them how to get back up. And research has shown that that's the issue. That's the issue that is really derailing kids. So that when they, they fall down, they don't get back up. It's what happens with people that, that drop out of school. And then they drop out of a marriage. And they drop out of a job. And the, what the, um, the social factors in successful, successful people are that they actually do have these internal strengths. It's the grit factor that we're teaching people. And so how do you teach? And we, we do this with infants on up. And how do you teach an infant to be nonviolent? Um, we are teaching them through tricks, essentially. Um, they are um, asked to uh, be able to understand other people's humanness. And so what you do, oh, let me share this one with you. This one's more fun. What you do is you don't teach children simply to say, oh, I'm sorry. We don't teach that at all. Um, what you teach them to do is to understand that everybody feels angry sometimes. And it's just what you do with that anger that is going to make you successful or not. And so this is one of the books that we use. And it's, it's a fabulous book. If any of you um, spend time with young children, I really think you would want to have this book. It's called Sometimes I'm Bombaloo. And I'm going to read it to you, because that's what we do in early childhood education. My name is Katie Honors, and I'm a really good kid. I smile a lot, because usually I'm happy, and I give excellent hugs. I brush my teeth without being reminded too much. I can Velcro my own shoes. You probably can't tie them, but you can Velcro them. 
and put my toys where they belong, including the ones with 60, 48 small pieces. I remember about using my napkin and the magic word. I don't whine or stamp my feet on gr uh, or growl, even if my brother knocks down my beautiful castle. I just built, and I told him not to touch it, and I'll never be able to get it to look that good again. Sometimes I can hold in the tears and the pushes and just say, that's okay. But sometimes I'm Bombaloo. I show my teeth and I make fierce noises. My face scrunches tight like a monster's. I use my feet and my fist instead of my words. My toys end up all over the floor, and so does my brother. There is a lot of yelling when I'm Bombaloo, and some pointing at my bed. I have to go take some time for myself and think about it. But, when I'm Bombaloo, I don't want to think about it. I want to smash stuff. I can come out when I'm ready to control myself and say I'm sorry to my brother, but while I'm Bombaloo, I'm not sorry. I'm angry. I hate everybody and everything, even my dog, Vanilla, and my penny collection, and my blankie, and my mother, and all of the clothes in my drawers. On their way out of the drawer, a pair of underpants lands, lands on my head like a hat. And then I laugh like Katie honors again. And I'm sorry and a little frightened. It's scary being Bombaloo. My mother knows that. She hugs me and helps me clean up the mess Bombaloo made. And then after some sorries and kisses from my brother, we build a new castle together. <laughs> Thank you. And those are the kinds of things that we are doing to teach nonviolence from birth. We are working with parents as well. And um, I have a little, um, not exactly pop quiz, but a little handout here that I'd like to give to you guys so that we could see, if you wouldn't mind passing those out for me, that I'd appreciate it. We can see what kinds of things parents are being asked to do with their young children. Thank you. Their young children. Um, because a lot of parents don't think that young children are um, able to be educated, um, even though most of us realize by now that kids start learning before birth, and they become sponges at birth. And so what we're asking parents to do is to really think about their own life and their own childhood. And, to, and so you'll see that on this first session one, activity one, we're asking parents to think of about somebody that was special in their life. She's not that one. Um, and, and what made you think of this person? And what did that person do that made you feel important or special? Because we have to get parents into the mindset that they are the most important trick. Spending time with their kids, it was mentioned earlier a couple of times, that having kids uh, get a, a Corvette when they're 16 years old is not the answer to a successful kid. Mm -hmm. But having that dad talk to them, spend time with them, even if I remember some of my best memories of my childhood, they certainly didn't feel like it when I was going through them, but uh, were when I was in, in the kitchen washing dishes after dinner with my mom. And 
and that was when we would sing. And that's the kind of spending time that parents need to understand. It doesn't take baby Einstein or any money to make kids really good, comfortable, self-confident kids. What it takes is you interacting. So with infants, what we teach parents is you need to talk, 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 talk to that baby. You talk to them all the time, and you talk to them like you would talk to other people. You don't growl at them. You don't think that it, it doesn't matter. It matters a lot, and that's where those kids are going to start learning um, their, their school readiness skills, learning how to listen to people, and more than that, learning that they are special to somebody. Every kid who's going to be successful has at least one person, one older person in their life, who was crazy about that kid. And every parent can do that. Every parent can be crazy about their kid without any kind of uh, parenting education, which I just hate. I think that that is so disrespectful that we actually um, presume that parents need to be educated. Now, they might need some support, and that's what our parent groups do. Um, but they've got it within them. Nobody wants their kid damaged. And so we're starting our program in the Shawnee neighborhood because it is the neighborhood that has the lowest uh, graduation rate and the highest violence rate. Mm -hmm. And so we have just started it. This month is our first, our first month. We think that it is going to be um, a game changer. I think that what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to form a network of child care providers in the Shawnee neighborhood that have quality programs like you have not seen mm -hmm. in other neighborhoods. And they, they truly are going to have um, the motto that is on the front of this handout, that nonviolence begins at birth, um, and that's also how to raise a genius. Um, all of these nonviolent tricks and toys and pathways are also indicators of school readiness. So if we, and I, I don't know if you all saw this, but, um, but they, they just released a report about um, two weeks ago, a school readiness report. Anybody see that? Yeah. And what, uh-huh. And what that report showed was that we've got a pretty dismal percentage of kids that are supposedly ready for kindergarten. I have a little problem with that whole concept. I think every child is ready for kindergarten. Um, kindergartens might not be ready for every child. But what it showed that was surprising to um, even those of us who are champions of child care is that kids that came from child care programs were 70%, consider 70% of them were ready for school, for kindergarten, as opposed to some of the other programs, including some very, very well-funded programs, which child care is not. Um, overall, it was about 44% of the kids were considered ready for, for um, kindergarten. So go child care. It is a wonderful way to deliver services. Um, and keep your eyes and ears open because um, the great program from Shawnee is going to spread throughout this community. And um, I think we're going to probably see kids that are 95, 98% ready for school. And they are not going to be derailed by um, not having the, the social emotional skills that they need. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening to my story today. Any questions? Yes. I got a couple hundred. You know, we deal with youth, our organization, 12 to 24. You know what people tell me? Too it's late. It's too, how did you know that? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right, it's too late. Police officer. So, you know, there was a report that came out, uh, we're all quoting reports here, that, that babies as young as six months old know good from bad. Yes. They know evil from bad. Yes. So morality is, 
hardwired in us. So you're right, when you're at the earliest ages, you can, is that sort of what you're trying to do? Like tap into that early genetics or are, is it all behavioral? Oh, I think that it's um, as much, I still have this. <laughs> okay. I have one in both hands. That's good. Um, I think that it is genetic, um, but it takes molding. Um, you know, babies, 90% of a baby's brain is developed by three years old. Um, and so it is developed and it's impacted by all of the things that go on around it. When you've got a baby that's living in a chaotic situation mm -hmm. where there is stress, where there uh, people, we don't know where the rent's going to come from, we don't know if we're going to have enough food, we don't know if um, dad's going to hurt mom, that, that stress level really has a negative impact on that baby's brain. So we want to make sure that people understand how, how um, impactful their actions are with babies. And really it is about seeing that baby as um, an individual who deserves all the respect that anybody else does. You know, I remember when I met with you, you said there's already cases in preschool where there's some I don't, I don't, you can't call them youth, there's some ch children acting out and almost unable to handle even at that early age? They, they get expelled. Does um, that happen often? Yes, it happens a lot. Um, it's really, it's a, one of those dark little secrets that nobody likes to talk about, but um, in Jefferson County, we have um, n uh, dozens, if not hundreds, of kids, and I would say probably hundreds of kids would be more accurate who get expelled from kindergarten or get expelled from pre-kindergarten. What, that's four years old, six years old? Four. Oh yeah. <coughs> yes? Executive decisions cannot be made by small children because their frontal lobe is not developed. But the decisions they make are observed decisions. Uh, because, you know, everybody should have anger. If they don't have anger, there's no problem. It's a normal emotion God has given us. Right. She's an older daughter now, but she taught her children. She had three little children who did, could not speak for a while, obviously. They, she taught every one of them sign language mm. so that to sit at the dinner table was an absolute joy because they would do this and that so there was nobody yelling for the potato. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I learned an enormous amount from this daughter because she one time told me, says, do you know dad? It is not a hearing problem, it's an understanding problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So we all dads have to learn how to be better dads. Because becoming a dad takes very little talent. Right. <laughs> becoming a father <laughs> takes a lot. But very, very important, what you are doing with these small children, I'm your, you are my hero. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. You're my new Valentine. <laughs> Did I mention... Uh, Dr. Banerjee is getting an award today. <laughs> Good timing. It's getting an award in a little while. Before, um, another question, please. Yeah, I just wanted uh, to ask, in, in your work, I, I know that there seems to be this, uh, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but there's an assumption that if, when these children are going through whatever they're going through, it is often because, I, what I'm hearing, like, uh, it's dead. Is that, is, is that a lack of intelligence? It's uh, what? Oh, oh no, uh, no, 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 no. No. No, 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 no. Oh, dads are good. <laughs> we got a fatherhood and, panel and in a couple you, seconds. This is going to be perfect. We see this all the time in child care. Mm -hmm. Kids that have dads um, are, um, I would say, more fully developed yeah. because dads will allow kids to do things that moms will not. Yeah. You know, so it, it really does encourage children to explore the world, and it encourages curiosity, um, it, it encourages bravery, and 
and um, it's there are, are a number of research studies that show it. And I want to try Yeah, and sorry about that. that. Absolutely, absolutely, point taken. I've actually seen moms beat up on dad too. You know, I don't know. I, your wife has got to come with you the next time because <laughs> she's so been we heard a really lot about bad it today. <laughs> Let's have a hand for Miss Vessels. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to have a fatherhood panel, and we're going to have an award ceremony. But first, we have to introduce somebody. Cause Can I just take one, one more second? Absolutely. Up here on the front table in this uh, really brightly colored uh, piece um, is a new piece that Jefferson County Public Schools just put out. And it's, school, it's, it's what they consider a school-ready kid to do. So here is your definition of what kids do in order to be considered school-ready. Um, it's a really lovely piece. I, I still have problems with the idea that uh, all kids aren't ready for school um, and think that we should start asking the question about aren't schools ready for kids. But anyway, I'm going to leave this up here, so it, please help yourself, take it, give it to your neighbors. Thank Perfect. You. By the way, anybody can leave anything for anybody at any of our Youth Alert uh, events. It's, it's for the public good and Anybody, anything, any, so I encourage you all to take whatever that's here. Thank you. Uh, mentor, we're gonna talk about mentoring and fatherhood. Uh, mentoring is going to be first, and, uh, and then in between we're gonna have an award ceremony because we started our own Peace Awards, recognizing adults and youth at our Peace Yah Awards. But um, 